Assalamualaikum and uh, welcome to session 94 of the HISC uh, Harborn Islamic Studies so called uh, Seda sessions on uh, the life of the Prophet, uh, where we're continuing with the Battle of Badr. And inshallah, today we'll talk about uh, some of the other minor uh, events uh, during the battle uh, and uh, wrapping up at the end of the battle. Because uh, last week we did talk about how the Prophet's leadership qualities, we talked about uh, the death of Abu Jahl, obviously uh, one of the main enemies of the Prophet. Uh, we talked about uh, the death of um, one of the other uh, enemies of the Prophet in uh, terms of um, Umayyah bin uh, Khalaf, uh, and then we talked about some, some of the other sort of uh, minor uh, instances around those uh, particular uh, aspects, and certainly uh, the way both of them met their uh, demise. Uh, a few of the other stories uh, during uh, the battle and uh, subsequent to the end of the battle uh, in today's uh, session and then inshallah we'll, we'll talk uh, in, in the following weeks around the prisoners of war, the distribution of the booty, how the news was received both in Mecca and Medina. Um, so what, one of the uh, other instances uh, during the battle that's recorded, and there aren't that many um, actual um, specific uh, incidents recorded in the books of Sida, uh, authentic uh, incidents. Um, so there's, we, we just get the, a few snapshots of uh, minor events, or well, not minor, but events that happened here uh, and there. You don't have an, an overall uh, uh, battle view of how the, the battle went from sort of moment to moment because it probably only lasted uh, a couple of hours if that uh, once the uh, Mubaharza happened and then the charge of the Quraysh followed by uh, the, the Muslim defense and then uh, you know we do get a sense that uh, terror was cast into the hearts of the uh, Quraysh and they essentially uh, dispersed they scattered um, uh, there wasn't any real uh, um, fighting or resistance put up by uh, the Quraysh uh, and it was a very uh, one-sided uh, event. Uh, certainly the, the angels were there uh, supporting the Muslims, uh, both the Muhajir and uh, the Ansar and that sort of led to a, a complete rout of all these uh, well-equipped, noble uh, army uh, or army of noblemen uh, rather than a noble army of the, of the, of the Quraysh. So uh, one of the incidents uh, was uh, Abu Ubaidah, uh, Amr uh, bin al-Jarrah. Now his father, Jarrah, he was on the side of the Quraysh, so from, uh, from Makkah, but he was a sworn bitter enemy of the Muslims and he became even more inflamed when his own son, Abu Ubaidah, became a, uh, a Muslim. So he swore before the battle that he would uh, hunt down his own son and try to, to kill him because his, uh, you know he felt that uh, this brought shame on him, his family, um, his, you know the fact that his own son, him being a leader, his own son uh, was a Muslim and he took this uh, as a very personal uh, quest. So on the battlefield, again, there aren't that many Muslims. There's only 300 or so Muslims. So it's, much, it's quite easy to, to uh, scope out who, who you're looking for. And the Muslims were lightly armed. They didn't have any armor. They weren't sort of protected uh, under helmets and, and, and things like that. So uh, whenever uh, Jarrah would see his uh, son Abu Vaida, uh, he would make his own way over you know, uh, walk over to uh, to meet him in combat. And Abu Baida, he would uh, see his father coming over him and out of respect, he would turn away or move or go uh, uh, try and fight somewhere else. So there he tried to avoid uh, both of their paths crossing. Uh, then, uh, but suddenly in the, the heat of the battle, as Abu Baida is, you know, fighting someone else, he turns around and he sees that his own father, Jara. Uh, comes and uh, pounces on him and he attacks him. So Abu Baidah, he had to defend himself uh, and during that um, uh, exchange of swords 
as I say, uh, you know, the, you know, the face-to-face -face combat. It find you know, he finds that in his self-defense, he he has to uh, kill his own father. And then one one of the things uh, that people then started to say uh, was that you know Abu Bay that he's uh, killed his own father, and for the for the society at the time, this was a great taboo. I mean, this broke all social norms, all uh, accepted ways of behaviour. Uh, you know, in all all the sort of uh, local laws, international laws, you do not kill. You do not kill people from your own tribe. You do not kill people from your own family, and you do not kill your own sons or fathers. Um, which is why the, the Battle of Badr was uh, such a historic uh, event that you, you you know you found that you know one tribe going to war with itself completely unheard of, and then one family going to war with itself. And completely unheard of, and father against son, vice versa. And, and this was one of the things that uh, Utba was trying to counsel the people, you know, uh, when he was trying to stop the battle. And, and 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 the scout that was sent saying, look, these are your own kith and kin. There's only three hundred of them, and if you kill them, you're killing your own. This is not acceptable. So, uh, so, so then you know people were sort of you know saying uh, these things, and and, and Abu Ubaida he he felt quite bad, obviously, you know, killed his own father, and and people are then, you know, uh, complaining. Well, not complaining, but 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 mentioning this, and, and it was like a, a negative thing, and it was a, a, a something some shame for him. Uh, he felt, uh, and uh, then. Uh, a verse was revealed in the Quran uh, later on, and you know he saw this as being refer referring to him, where Allah says in the Quran, in translation, "You will not find a people who believe in Allah and the last day having affection for those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, even if they were here, their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their kindred. Those He has decreed within their hearts." faith and supported them with spirit from him and we will admit them to gardens beneath which rivers flow wherein they will abide eternally allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him they those are the party of allah uh, unquestionably the party of allah they are the successful so subhanallah here you have the, uh, a verse uh, of uh, of praise from allah for people like abu ubaidah uh, another story about um, a son and his father is uh, going back uh, to uh, the uh, Mubaraza, uh, which was the duel right at the beginning before the main combat. So uh, the duel was uh, between um, uh, Utba ibn Abiyah, uh, his uh, son uh, and uh, his uh, his brother, so Walid and uh, Sheba, and uh, so the three of them, who were Qurayshi, uh, even though Utba was trying to stop the the fight, three of them were killed. So the the the, the uh, and then uh, we talked about how Abu Jal said the reason why Utba didn't want the fight was not not because you know. You know, even though he offered to pay the blood money of uh, Al Hadrami, uh, Abu Jal was saying the reason he doesn't want to fight is because his son is on the other side, and then he doesn't want his son uh, to die. And his son is Abu uh, Udayfa. Um So, at the beginning of the battle, the Prophet uh, said to the uh, the Muslims that uh, in battle there are some people who should be spared. Right? There was an amnesty zone. So, uh, uh, people should not kill people like Abu Bukhtari, Al Abbas, uh, and he named one or two others from Banu Hashim. So Abu Hudayfa, he you know he heard this, um, and and he has just witnessed his own father, his own uncle, his own brother being killed in the Mubaraza. So. Um, yeah, he's quite emotional, and this is the the, the, the start of the battle, so he, he's very emotional. And then, um, in this uh, time of you know emotion and and, and, and tension, 
he he blurts out that you know um i you know how is it that you know we see our fathers and uncles and brothers die yet uh the face uh yet uh alabas the uh uncle of the prophet he is protected so you know he's he's got all these emotions saying look I, you know i've just witnessed the the, the death of my near ones and in the process of he's giving amnesty to his uncle what's this about and he goes you know uh, uh verily you know um uh i you know i, I swear that i will you know uh, strike al abbas so uh so then uh the uh uh, news gets because certainly there's only 300 of or so 313 or so of the the muslims uh, news then comes back to the prophet Salam that look uh, <coughs> abu Ubaida, sorry abu hudayfa um he's saying this that you know he's going to search out for uh, and and find al abbas and, and go against the express uh wishes of the prophet Salam. So he, he's quite um, uh, disturbed by this. So then he turns to his his own wazir, his right hand uh, man, and says to uh, Umar ibn al Khattab, Oh, Umar, or he, actually he calls him Ya Abu Hafs. Uh, although his uh, Umar's daughter's name was Hafsa, Prophet gave him uh, the, the title Ya Abu Hafs. He goes, Ya Abu Hafs. How is it that the face of the uncle of the Prophet will be struck by a sword? Okay. And uh, so expressing to uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab that, look, this should not be allowed to happen. Uh, and then uh, Umar, um, he said, uh, oh, <laughs> in typical Umar ibn al-Khattab fashion, Oh Allah, he has committed nifaq, hypocrisy, he has committed nifaq, and let me take care of him. And the Prophet forbade him from uh, doing anything uh, 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 adverse to uh, Abu Hudayfa, but just basically sought him out. So Abu Bakr, sorry, so Umar ibn al Khattab, he uh, then went over to Abu Ubaidah and uh, expressed clearly the wishes of the Prophet uh, in a very forthright manner, obviously. Uh, and then uh, Abu Hudayfa, he realized the errors of his ways what he had said, what he had blurted out in anger when he was overcome by emotion. Um, and then he felt uh, a great grief because of that. And we see how, how this whole battle, how the emotions are running high because it is a very uh, tense time for everyone. Um, so uh, so uh, later on, it said that uh, Abu uh, Hudayfa, he would say that he was so ashamed of what he had said and he blurted out, uh, you know, out loud, people could hear, that he said, I, you know, I'll never feel safe about that one phrase I said unless Allah accepts me as a martyr, as a shaheed. And this was one of his du'as. And then later on his du'a was accepted and he became a shaheed in uh, the battle of uh, Yamama. Uh, the the wars of uh, apostasy uh, much uh, later on. So um, a, a lot of uh, learning uh, from the story of Abu Hudayfa. Again, you know, it's easy to um, uh, to make mistakes, to say things, uh, to be overcome by emotion, uh, um, and uh, to do things uh, wrong, to fall into to error. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, if, if we do it, today in our own life, you know, uh, whether we're stressed or not, or under great stress and duress, and then we, we you know, we say and do things uh, we, which uh, are uh, not uh, what should be done, you know, we should bear in mind that, you know, they, these things, and we'll come across this in, 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 in other stories in, in the in the Sira, um, you know, even the, the, the best of the best, uh, they would, you know, uh, fall into error. So it's, it's it's easy, that's part of life. But the important thing is to repent to Allah and ask for Allah's forgiveness. And then, you know, hopefully, inshallah, you know, uh, live in, in, in hope of that forgiveness and that we can get through this, you know. And, 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 and Abu Ubaidah, he, he, he had that uh, firm uh, conviction. Uh, but also, um, 
you know, uh, another uh, sort of lesson is, is how the process um, uh, delicately handled the matter because if you've got someone, you know, there's only a small band of people at the outset of the battle uh, going around openly saying this and, and, and maybe charging up others and, you know, uh, riling up, you know, other people's emotions and, and possibly potentially causing, causing um, uh, some rift within your own ranks. You know, the processor, you know, he turned to somebody who he knew would handle it in the right way, uh, you know, very uh, strictly, sternly, but not over the top. Uh, and then obviously Umar ibn al-Khattab, he did sort that out uh, in a very uh, stern and polite way, even though well, they was acting emotionally, you know, that was overlooked. And then once the battle was over, that was it. That was the end of the matter. Prasasam did not bring it up. Prasasam did not um, raise uh, raise the issue directly with Abu Hudayfa. Because if the Prasasam had gone himself to uh, Abu Hudayfa or, or, or raised it directly with him face to face, um, Abu Hudayfa would have been, you know, in a much worse mental uh, state. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to look at the process of in, in the eye and, and who knows what might have happened after that. Um, so uh, so we, we see after the battle, when uh, the bodies of the 24 of the leaders of the Quraysh were being dragged and thrown into to the well, the body of uh, Utba was being dragged, uh, Utba being uh, Abu Dhaifa's uh, father, so Abu uh, Hudayfa ibn Utba, um, was was looking at his father being dragged and uh, thrown into the well, and you could see everyone could see that Abu Dhaifa uh, was looking pale. So the Prophet some noticed that and and uh, went over to Abu Dhaifa, overlooking everything that had been said, and said, "Maybe you're getting a bit upset by this, or finding this a bit difficult." Um, and being there in a very you know uh, pastoral way and trying to give support to to Abu Hudayfa, and so Abu Hudayfa he replies, "Look, I've no doubt that uh, you know my father died on a uh, prophet. He died a, a disbeliever, and I don't have a problem with him dying. That's fine. I'm only sad because I knew my father, and he was a wise man, and he had great love and care for people." And then I, I had hoped that these qualities would have brought about good in him, and he would have seen the benefits of Islam, and he would would have become Muslim. So I don't, I'm 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 not sad that he died as a, a, a disbeliever. It's just that I regret because I had hoped that he would become a Muslim, because there were some really good noble qualities in him, and and. You know, if if you compare the the attitude of you know some of the noblemen in in the Quraysh, uh, Utba he was one of those who was more noble uh, and didn't have the same venom uh, and hatred, uh, the, the the visceral hatred that people like Abu Jahl and Umayya and Uqba these people had towards the Muslims or to the or the process of the, he didn't have that visceral blinding hate. Uh, so he was a, he was a man of reason. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, and again, we you know one of the things we can learn from that is that you know we don't decide whom Allah guides and how they guide. Uh, after all, Abu Talib, the uncle of the processor, who raised him from a very young age and gave him protection, you know, uh, you know, for you know almost a decade uh, of his uh, prophethood, you know, on his deathbed he did not become a Muslim. And then you've got other people, you know, who who had that visceral hatred towards Islam, like Umar bin al-Khattab, we just talked about, who then, whose hearts were turned, and they became one of the strongest supporters of uh, the process of, and of Islam. So, uh, so we cannot guide whom we like. Uh, we can only, you know, uh, discuss people and have uh, hope and make dua for people to see uh, the light and become a uh, Muslim, but it's Allah who ultimately guides and who, who, who for whatever uh, is known, uh, is best known to Allah, who he decides uh, 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 to show guidance. So some other uh, other stories uh, of the battle, and 
Um, just, just just talking about uh, uh, Umayyah bin Khalaf as being one of the uh, the the more the, the people who, who had a visceral hatred towards uh, Islam when he was being uh, dragged back by uh, Abdullah uh, ibn Rawaha uh, as a sort of prisoner of war before Bilal saw him. He asked Abdullah, uh, who was that man who had an ostrich feather uh, strapped to his chest? And uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha said, oh, that, is, that was Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. And then Umayyad says, well, this is the man who ruined us today. Uh, and he was truly the Asadullah, the, the Lion of Allah, because the way Hamza fought on the battlefield, it was the, the stuff of legend. People could see how fierce he was. And, you know, we, we know him from, from the Sira to be a very strong, well-built uh, person and obviously very experienced in, in, in warfare, uh, very experienced uh, soldier. So he was uh, throwing himself at the front of the battlefield, really, you know, slaying people uh, left, right and centre. Uh, and, and he had that persona or aura around him on, you know, in, in normal life. And certainly this was um, accentuated on the battlefield. And, and, and you know, because of the ferociousness in which uh, Hamza fought, that obviously, you know, um, added to the chaos of the, uh, the Quraysh. Um, so um, uh, another thing, similarly, you know, there are stories of how Umar ibn al-Khattab, again, uh, similarly, uh, a well-built uh, character, you know, very uh, uh, um, a dominating uh, persona in real life. And, and this was accentuated on the battlefield. And it said that he didn't spare the life of any of the, uh, the idolaters on the battlefield, he even, uh, even uh, taking the life of his own uncle on his maternal side, Al-As bin uh, Hisham bin al mughira So, you know, Umar again, not taking any prisoners, you know, Umar and Hamza in the thick of things, really fighting, you know, um, uh, very ferociously. Uh, and again, uh, Abu Bakr, um, he was, uh, you know, uh, on the battlefield, you know, his own son, Abdurrahman, uh, who was still a, 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 an idol worshipper, polytheist, uh, a mushrik at the time um, he was fighting so uh, you know Abu Bakr would shout at him oh uh, where is my wealth you wicked boy you know uh, and then the son again shouting back on the battlefield obviously there is that you know hatred and enmity with them despite being father and son saying oh uh, your, your wealth that's gone with the wind um, uh, so um, uh, another thing is um that one of the things that we we find, uh, and, and, and apart from these you know, few instances, there aren't many other uh, combat narratives uh, from uh, the battle. Uh, it's just a general, uh, the battle happened, the Muslims won. But uh, the, the other narrations, we don't have them transmitted uh, uh, to us uh, because there weren't that many Muslims. There were only 313 and, you know, uh, uh, they weren't able to, many of them weren't able to, to survive long enough to pass on and transmit all of the, the battle scenes. And there were other battles and other things in, in, in Medina that were then sort of um, uh, talked about. Um, so uh, w one of the things that, that, that is noted that you know, people have studied the, uh, the, the plains of Badr and the process of being a tactician, you know, uh, the way he camped and how, how the battle happened. Um, it is, you know, because he was the process and was there first and he, he'd camped at a strategic point in front of the wells after giving advice. Uh, and, and then the Grace had to uh, double back uh, and camp at the far side. The, the process could have, if he'd A, had the manpower and, and B, uh, wanted to. Um, when the Grace were fleeing, he could have uh, blocked off the escape route that they had back to uh, uh, Makkah uh, and he could have, you know, uh, stationed people there. But, you know, for whatever reason, you know, um, you know, we find that he, you know, he, he allowed 
the, Mus uh, the non-Muslims uh, to escape and to, to retreat you know, when the battle uh, was over and he didn't pursue them and he didn't block off their, their, their exit. You know, um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and one of the reasons we'll see this, and this comes up in one or two of the other battles, is that when it's clear, and, and this is what the scout, the, the, the Qureshi scout was said uh, right at the beginning, if you've got people there who are fighting to the death, they've got nothing to lose, and you could see that in the eyes of the Muslims, uh, then they will fight more ferociously. And if you, you know, pin them into a corner and give them no means of escape, then again, they've got nothing to lose. They will, you know, fight more ferociously, fight to the death, you know. Um, and so the Prophet by giving, by ensuring that there is a way out for the the, the Quraysh, knowing that victory was promised, so he, you know, it, it psychologically means that when terror is cast into the hearts of the uh, Quraysh, they just they just flee, uh, and you know they know they've got a, a way out, and, and, and they they scarper. Whereas if that was blocked off, then they would actually, you know, uh, have have to fight because there's no way out. So. So that so you know it, it's you know it's you know it's narrated that obviously that the Quraysh fled, but they were you can also say they were allowed to flee and to escape by the Prophet Sallam. Um, and uh, so um, so at the end of the battle, people getting dispersed. Uh, what we uh, find is the Prophet he, he turns and looks at the face of Saad in Mu'ad, who is at the the head. Of the uh, personal protection, the, the the guard of uh, the uh, the Prophet So he's the one who who stated Saad stated we should have a, a, a headquarters for the Prophet on the battlefield where he can overlook things. So the Prophet would go fight and come back, and he'd be in this uh, in his headquarters. So uh, Saad, Saad had a a, um, uh, a look of sort of disgust towards captives towards the people that they'd captured and then they're, they're taking back uh, to the uh, to the encampment um, and you know he was clearly of the opinion that this was the first victory that the Muslims had over the Mushri and you know uh, Huck had, uh, 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 the truth had defeated a falsehood and battle and evil and and, and, and so he made it clear that they should, you know, slay all of these people. And again, we'll talk about what happened to the prisoners of war, um, probably in, in, in next week's uh, session. Um, uh, and then again, sort of on the battlefield, you see uh, Musa ibn Umair um, uh, walking by and seeing that his own uh, brother was being tied up uh, as a, a prisoner of war uh, by the uh, Ansar. So Musab, he then uh, turned to these Ansar people, and again, Musab ibn Umair, you know, he was um, the, uh, the the envoy that was sent by the Prophet Sallam to Medina. He knew all of the Ansar because he he was directly or indirectly involved in making them all uh, Muslims. So he said to the Ansar, you know, tighten his uh, his hands tighter, you know, uh, make them not really secure. Uh, because his mother is very wealthy and you know if we're going to ransom them then she will pay a really high price for uh, for this uh, for uh, Abu Aziz. So Abu Aziz he, he, he again he just could not understand so he said uh, uh, you know uh, what are you talking about you know am I not your brother you know um, you know and, 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 and try to sort of you know uh, talk his way out of that uh, then uh, Musab uh, ibn Umair al Abdadi he said, Look, you know, you are no more my brother. These people, the Ansar, they are more my brothers than, than you are. And again, this sort of blew the mind of, of, of Abu Aziz. How, you know, even though, even though, you know, uh, an hour or two earlier they're on opposing sides wanting to kill each other, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, Musab, he is there saying that. In all, in reality, he finds the, his Ansari uh, brethren closer to him as brothers than 
uh, his own blood brother. And, and again, these are still we're still in the the time of the the, the pact of brotherhood. So uh, the Prophet uh, then, as I say, uh, ordered the, uh, the the corpses of the twenty-four noblemen to be, you know, flung into uh, the well. And we talked about uh, what uh, Abu Hudayfa uh, said. Um, there was uh, another instance where, um, on the, the 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 battlefield, I mean, the Prophet he asked uh, Azubair ibn Al Awam for his spear. Uh, his javelin that he had as a souvenir, as a memento, because uh, as Zubair, um, he he went over, he uh, found uh, one of the the um, ferocious knights of the Quraysh, well known for his his uh, um, uh, fighting, his his battlefield skills, and this was uh, someone called Abu Kish, um, who was a uh, um, a stout, you know, a young, well-built, uh, a stout, well-built person with a little bit of a pot belly, but he was covered in armor, and it, you know, he gave the impression of being in peg, in you know, uh, uh, undefeatable. You know that you know he he is there, uh, you know, head to toe in body armor, and you know, uh, trying to you know tell people that you know he is you know uh, invincible. Uh, and so uh, Az Zubair he he goes with his spear to uh, Abu Kirsh, uh, and he uh, pierces the spear, finds a, a little slit in his helmet armor where his eyes are, and you know um, uh, gets through and you know uh, gets the spear into that little slit. But the slit is too tiny for the the actual javelin or spear to go through, so he has to force it through. And then, as a bulkish is on the floor, he then has to, you know, use his you know his whole body weight and his his feet to you know get uh, get the spear through and to 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 kill him. And then, as he's you know, pulling the spear out of his uh, the, the 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 helmet, the, the the tip of the spear it it bends. So then, at the end, at the conclusion of the battle, the Prophet knew this. He saw this, and and he wanted that uh, spear as as a souvenir of the battle. Uh, and then, uh, after the Prophet passed away, that spear uh, as uh, you know uh, passed on to Abu Bakr and then to Umar ibn Al Khattab as a memento. Then it went back uh, after that uh, to Az Zubair. He got it back, but then when Uthman became a Khalif, Uthman asked for it back from uh, Zubair uh, and then Ali had it in his possession when he was Khalif and then after uh, the Khilafat of uh, Ali uh, it was then handed back to Abdullah ibn Zubair the, the son of Zubair so on the Muslim side we you know we saw um, you know maybe 13 to 15 uh, people who were who died so, um, uh, who, who had Shahada on the uh, Qureshi side, it said over 70 people. And again, we, we know in, in, in the Sira when you talk about 70, it means that there were a lot of people. So, 70 to 100 uh, were killed in uh, the uh, uh, Qureshi uh, army. So, that's 100 out of nearly 1,000. Uh, that uh, that were uh, in the Quraysh army, so quite a you know uh, quite a big uh, hit rate, and obviously then you've got those who were then captured, seventy who were captured, you know, so <clears throat> quite a, a very uh, one sided you know getting towards you know, just under a, a fifth of the the, the Quraysh army uh, being captured or killed uh, with the battle. Uh, and then you know uh, you've got a, a handful, just over a dozen Muslims who were uh, uh, shaheed uh, during the battle. Uh, one of these, um, uh, uh, an Ansari person called uh, Haritha, he was actually killed by a stray arrow from the Muslim side, friendly fire, we would say nowadays. Uh, and, and the people were saying how unfortunate it is that you know he will be 
um, uh, it, potentially, he, you know, he'll be denied the, the riches because of, of the afterlife because he was killed by his own, so friendly fire. Um, so, the, you know, uh, there were these rumours that were going around. Uh, and again, because this was the first time, the first real battle, all the rules um, and the explanation around the, the you know who gets what, uh, the war booty, the prisoners of war, uh, the blessings of, of uh, Shahada, n none of these have really been revealed. So people are still relying on their own interpretations for a lot of these things, and we'll talk, talk about that at later uh, uh, later on now and um, next week, inshallah. So the mother of Haritha. Uh, she approaches the Prophet Solomon and she's quite sad uh, and, and she asks him because she's heard that, you know, her son was killed by friendly fire and a stray arrow from their own side. And she asked the Prophet Sallam, you know, very, obviously very sad, saying, you know, can you please tell me the faith, uh, the fate of my son? Um, if he is in Jannah, then I'll be happy for him. But if he is elsewhere, then I will mourn for him because she's not sure. She doesn't know how to compute this information. So the Prophet, he, you know, he, he was very surprised by this attitude. And he goes, look, don't, you know, why are you so upset? Because, you know, uh, there are levels of Jannah above the highest level, you know, in the highest level. And your son will be in the highest of the gardens. You know, because he is a Shaheed, he died on the battlefield. So he's giving her reassurance that Haritha will be in the utmost, the highest of uh, the heavens. So again, there's a lot of you know way you know a, a lot of um, explaining to do to 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 the Ummah around what is you know martyrdom and its it, its it, its values uh, and how esteemed it is. But this was the first occasion where the concept of martyrdom is there. So again, Allah needs to reveal this information. The Prophet needs to educate uh, the Ummah uh, around this. Um, uh, but but that's that's when the, the Muslims got back to uh, Medina. But in the interim, <coughs> excuse me, however, uh, the Prophet um, he said that for the for three days, they would stay on, and they would camp, they would, remain camped on the battlefield in uh, Badr. So they, uh, they got there Thursday night, the battle was on the Friday, uh, and then they returned on uh, the Monday. And then this became uh, something that the Prophet would do uh, at, the, um, at the end of every battle. He would stay there for three days uh, for various reasons. Uh, and you can, you know, we'll talk about some of the benefits of that uh, uh, later on. One of the things, obviously, is to ensure that there isn't a counterattack. Uh, and again, we'll talk about this at, at, at Uhud as well. So, you know, you know, the the Quraysh are, you know, uh, more in number, and then they may think that okay, they've been uh, routed in this uh, particular encounter, um, and they may regroup and then uh, attack again. And he wants to ensure that um, it's quite clear who the, who, who the victors are and to prevent any, you know, surprise re-attack uh, that uh, the Quraysh may, uh, may launch. So again, <coughs> uh, Protestantism doesn't know how the Quraysh are going to react, you know, they, you know uh, how badly they've taken it, how much they may try to you know, uh, say, look, we we, you know, we haven't accomplished what, what we wanted to do. Let's go back. So, again, to, to counter that, you know, he, he is making it clear that they're there, they're going to stay and they're going to fight if, if if necessary. So, you know, and there, there are lots of other things that uh, they that they do in those uh, uh, remaining time before they um, go back. Um, and uh, so we, you know, uh, the other main thing, so I'll sort of just, you know, finish off talking about the war booty, the Ghanima. Uh, and again, this is a this is a new uh, uh, new topic. This is a new area that they've not encountered before. Um, what happens because what happens on the battlefield when you've got uh, you know spoils of war? They've not been in this situation. They've not had a battle before. E even the caravans that they've sent out that they've uh, went to to intercede. 
um, uh, intercept rather so those uh, the, those uh, missions to intercept the caravans um, they were specifically uh, you know uh, for that purpose they've they've not had an actual battle so the, the the rules of war aren't there what happens with prisoners of war it's not clear what happens with the spoils of war the war, bo war booty that's not clear so um, what we what we got uh, at the the end of the battle, they're, they're throwing the the bodies in in the well, and you've got other Muslims having heated discussions around the 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 spoils of war, the war booty. What happens? No one is quite clear what happens. So they're relying on their own judgment. They've not had revelation yet around it. So uh, discussions, heated discussions, break out now that it's clear that they've won and. and you know, the armor is very expensive. You know, the armor can fetch a lot in the open market. Um, and the, the, the Muslims of uh, Medina, or, you know, they're not, uh, they don't have that much wealth. They don't have that much armor. So this is quite, uh, you know, uh, quite important to sort out what, what happens uh, with this. So, so then the discussions are, 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 are breaking out and there's three, lots of, uh, Sahabi, who who then all uh, pile in on the discussion. So the um, uh, one group says, "Look, we're the ones who actually on the battlefield went around and we collected the booty, right? So we went and we collected it. We're the ones who you know killed the people, whatever. The you know we should have the booty. That's the previously known uh, way of doing things. That's how we used to do things. Surely we we have it." It, it uh, by right it's ours and then another group saying well actually you've got a point but we were the ones who were chasing away the Quraysh so the battle was over the Quraysh were running away and we were the ones who were pursuing them to make sure that they'd completely gone so we couldn't we couldn't take our armor and, and booty with us as we're chasing the army that would you know weigh us down so we're you know we killed them we've done what we've had to do and we're chasing them away so it's it's ours because it belonged to us but we left it there because we're chasing the people away and then the third group um uh, they said look you know you know okay fine you, you know you you may have collected it uh, you may have done the chasing but our job was to protect the process and you can't get anything more important than that and 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 we stayed at our post uh, and we're you know so you know, we should have a right over that because, you know, we're the ones who are collecting, uh, we're the ones who are protecting the process of them, uh, we're his, you know, personal guards. So so all of them, you know, wanted a bit of the, the booty and, and none of them knew what, what to do. So they're all giving their own opinions around it. Uh, and then uh, Saad uh, ibn Abi Uqas, he comes to Prophet Salman and he's got a beautiful sword in his hand. And he says, oh, uh, Prophet of Allah, you know, give me this sword you know because my, my sword was rubbish or I, I i couldn't use it and i've taken this really good sword uh, and uh, uh you know let me have this as as uh, as my war booty so then allah reveals uh the the first verses of uh, surah al-anfal literally on the battlefield and basically in translation uh, they ask you, O Muhammad, about the ghanima, the, 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 the spoils of war, the, the bounties of war. Say, uh, the decision concerning uh, the bounties is for Allah and the Messenger. So fear Allah and amend that which is between you and obey Allah and his Messenger if you should be believers. So the very first thing is saying, look, forget all this arguing. It's nothing to do with you. It all belongs to the Prophet. It, or, or Allah and his messenger okay so stop arguing sort out, sort these things out this is you've just won the battle you've just this is the most decisive battle in the history of uh, Islam you know where evil has been routed the grace has been routed the shaitan has scarpered he has been he has never been more humiliated than on the day of Badr that's a, that, that's a, 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 a sahih hadith so, you know, why are you arguing about the spoils of all? Look at the bigger picture. Give all the spoils, everything you have. It belongs to Allah and his messenger. We'll sort it out. So, again, you know, Allah is just putting a stop to all of this, nipping this in the bud. 
So, you know, the reminder is that, you know, the reason you fought is not for the wealth. You know, so let's not get greedy about this. Let's not get materialistic about this. Let's not focus on, on, on material possessions. Look at the bigger picture. And then we find later on that uh, the detailed verses around what happens to the Ghanima are uh, revealed. And uh, essentially, um, you, uh, uh, you have a fifth of it. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, uh, divided into five portions. Uh, a fifth of it uh, goes to uh, specific people. The sort of the remainder, 80 percent, goes to the people who fought. So the, the, the people are, who took part in the Battle of and again, this came later, the, the, uh, uh, the combatants in the Battle of Badr, they got 80 percent of the, the, the wealth. And uh, for the Battle of Badr, which is different to the others because that the rules were then further clarified, but for the Battle of Badr, everyone who fought got an equal share of that 80 percent. So all the fighters got an equal share. And there were, there were a handful, it said that there are nine people who got part of that share, even though they weren't on uh, the physically fighting on the battlefield. And um, one of those being Uthman ibn Affan, um, who was married to the daughter of the Prophet Muqayya. He wanted to come for the battle, but the Prophet insisted that he stay and look after Ruqayya because she was uh, very ill at the time and in, in, in fact she you know she she was uh, terminally ill and she she was going to die on the uh, uh, the uh, she died during this time and she was buried on the the morning of the return of the process on, on on the Monday so if mine got an equal share even though he wasn't physically fighting um, so uh, it, it was distributed equally later on in uh, you know after Heber the, the verses were revealed that clarified that actually the uh, the knights, uh, those on on horseback, would get uh, a greater share um, than though than the infantry. Um, uh, but that that's much later on. Here, everyone got an equal share of the wealth, and then the twenty percent that was put aside, that in itself is divided into fifths, so uh, two tithes each. And um, uh, so a fifth of the fifth goes as uh, personal wealth to the Prophet Okay, A fifth of the fifth uh, goes to the household of the Prophet El Bayt. Okay, and so, so they get, uh, for their upkeep, they get uh, some wealth. Um, so of the 20%, a fifth for the Prophet a fifth for El Bayt, the household of the Prophet uh, And this was their only income the actual own income of the Prophet and the household was this. They, they weren't involved in business. You know, the Prophet was doing uh, some business before and then, you know, not anymore. He's full-time Rasulullah. He's full-time head of state. Okay, so this is his only uh, income. A fifth of that uh, fifth, it goes to the orphans. Uh, another uh, fifth goes to the poor people and the other remaining fifth goes to the travellers. So it, this is all uh, laid out, how how that uh, fifth gets uh, distributed. But again, we'll talk more about that next time, inshallah. And again, uh, specifically next time, we'll uh, probably do uh, most of the session on what happens to the prisoners of war. Again, this is a new uh, situation for the Muslims. How do they deal with the prisoners of war? And so Prophet took counsel and then the decision and then Allah's judgment on the matter, inshallah, next time. So until then, uh, do remember the Nidwaz, um, any questions or, or comments, uh, do you know, get in touch, email, WhatsApp or um, uh, however else you wish to, uh, on Facebook. Um, and uh, inshallah, um, uh, we'll uh, catch up again soon. Assalamu um, ولا سر إن الإنسان إن الله في خصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم